Welcome back to Star Property TV's Inspiring Individual Series. Our guest today is the CEO and founder of Korean wallpaper, Yong Chen Hui. His journey in entrepreneurship began in a modest, low-cost apartment for an office in Starbucks some decade ago. Through his leadership, Korean wallpaper has set an unprecedented wallpaper trend in Malaysia and took the market by storm. In recent years, Korean wallpaper has won several business awards, including the 2015 SME Business Excellence Award, 2016 Sinchu Business Excellence Award, and Yong himself is a winner of the 2016 JCI Creative Young Entrepreneur. Yong also co-founded the much-anticipated CO3 Social Office, a Google-like co-working space, which you'll briefly tell us about. So without further ado, welcome Mr. Yong. All right, uh, thanks for coming here today. And before we get started, uh, you, maybe you want to tell us about your background and, and especially growing up, you know, did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Um, but me, um, as usual, I mean, um, after the school, by the way, I didn't went into a uh, university. Mm -hmm. So after my STPM, I, I started working. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a few years later, I decided to start my own business. So to relate to a uh, Korea wallpaper, in fact, we started as an interior design firm way back to 2008. Mm -hmm. But we didn't make it. A few years later down the road, the, the company sort of like failed because okay. we had some bad debts, uh, we couldn't collect, and then uh, we have cash flow problem. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have a small team, that time really small, it's about five of us. All right. Five of us, okay. What happened was, um, the business is not doing good, but uh, we feel like we do not want to dismiss the team. Okay. So we sat down and then we said, uh, what we gotta do? So we took about six to seven months time, eventually we found a business called Wallpaper Business. So okay. that's where we started the Korea wallpaper. I still remember that is way back to uh, 2011. We started the first Korea wallpaper gallery in Puchong. Okay. Something like that. 2011 and... About and six years from now. How would you say Korean wallpaper differ from you know, other companies in the, in the marketplace now? See, um, first of all, people often misunderstand that, misunderstood that Korea wallpaper is a Korean company. Yep. The fact is, it's not true. Korea Wallpaper founder, I'm one of them. Yep. And it's a pure Malaysian company. Yep. So um, to explain that, what inspired us about, about this uh, Korea Wallpaper brand is because by then, 2011, there's no brand, basically, basically, no brand mm -hmm. in the wallpaper. Okay. You can find good brand, big brand in the paint industry. Yep. For example, people hear about Nippon paint, yeah. Kansai paint, ICI, and so on. Mm -hmm. Then we said, uh, why not we build a brand for wallpaper? Mm -hmm. Then we decided to choose Korea wallpaper. Then we talked to our Korean counterpart in Korea. We said, uh, uh, make us the wallpaper we want, and then we want to position it as Korea wallpaper. Mm -hmm. So that's wallpaper start. And back to your question, how do we differentiate ourselves uh, yeah. from other wallpaper company? First of all, it's about the brand. But then, uh, most importantly, we do not see other wallpaper company is our competitor. In okay. fact, we see we are actually competing with the paint company mm -hmm. instead. Yep. So to differentiate between wallpaper and paint, of course, uh, is the effect is the effect it render, yep. is the textures and is the quality of the product itself. So then, uh, of course, uh, people said, um, you know what, wallpaper could be good, but the fee also very high. Yep. So what we do, um, since 2011, I still can remember, we have one mission to make wallpaper really affordable. Okay. Really, really affordable. To put into figure, you see, um, we wanted to make wallpaper is somehow equivalent or lower than paint. Okay. So that's just where we come from. All right. All right. And your motto is achieving the unconceivable. P perhaps you want to elaborate on this. Yeah. So, say, uh, some good friend of mine uh, who know me for very long, they, 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 they always say, they, they say, Yong, you know what, sir? You are the people um, who make impossible to possible. 
and most importantly, you always do it in a very fun way. Okay. So it's kind of fun. So they, this is how they look at me. But to me, um, maybe I, I, I give some example. You see, I still remember uh, the wallpaper story. By 2014, 2014, mm-hmm. we, have a, we have a tough time. Tough time, they said, because when we said we are competing with pain. Yep. So, but the thing is, painting is a culture in Malaysia. Yeah. We're not competing between the product. We are competing. We, 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 our, our works is actually uh, influencing the culture so that, mm-hmm. for example, you are a new home owner. Now you get a key from the developer. You want to move in your house. So first thing coming to your mind is always paint my yeah. whole house. Yeah. All right. So this is the culture. So to influence the culture is not easy. Yeah. So to make it possible, to make it possible, what we do, uh, I remember that, um, we give free wallpaper okay. to people. So the market shock is seriously free wallpaper. You come here, you take the wallpaper, you pay for the installation, that's it. Okay. That's it. So, so this is what, what we do, all right? Okay, and uh, at, you know, in the initial stages of a startup, what would you say is most important? You know? Is it time? Is it funding? Is it the team or organizational structuring? Initial stage, uh. yeah. Only one? Uh, most important? Yeah. <laughs> uh, or maybe top three, most important. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say the um, spirit. The spirit of the uh, mm-hmm. entrepreneur. See, the spirit on... Uh, because you see, it is not easy for a startup, not to yep. say to success, but to survive. Yep. To survive is... Like, to survive itself is not an easy task. Mm-hmm. So... So it, it requires strong spirit, yep. I mean, from the leader, from the team, to overcome whatever the obstacle. So to keep the spirit high, I would say this is the single most important thing okay, for any of the startup. And, and, and what have, uh, what's the biggest lesson for you since being an entrepreneur? Biggest lesson? Yep. Mm. I would say... Um, Again, back to what I just said. Um, overcoming challenge, keep overcoming challenge. I remember, um, see, um, my parents taught me. See, a successful mm-hmm. people is not how smart you are. It's not. All right. It is about how you overcoming difficulties mm-hmm. over and over again, without fail. So yeah. that is what I learned. So see, we 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 have difficulty, challenges, problem, mm-hmm. almost every day, big or yeah. small. Yeah. So one of the thing is overcoming. Okay, and and so far, you know, in your entrepreneur uh, journey, mm-hmm. what has been your biggest setback, and and how do you manage to overcome the challenge? Biggest. Yeah. Wow, well, your question is only one answer. Biggest. <laughs> 2015. Okay. 2015, which is two years back, um, two, two of our wallpaper gallery mm-hmm. burn out. Burn. It's fire. Okay. So that that happened a month before Raya. See, see. in our industry, wallpaper, the month before Raya is the peak. Okay. So this is where we have the best business of the month, of the year. And then we couldn't believe that two of our gallery caught fire mm-hmm. and burned. And that causing us running into a trouble. Trouble in the sense that um, we have cash flow problem mm-hmm. and then the stock destroyed. So we couldn't deliver mm-hmm. as what we have promised. So that's it really really tough to us by then and and, and in under those circumstances right how do you manage to to lift the spirit of your team keep them motivated to to carry on in in times like that i think before i keep them motivated i have to motivate myself first yeah i'm very, very demotivated by then <laughs> very very demotivated mm-hmm. and then but then uh i take about i think one or two days i ask myself what should i do should I uh, just give up? Hmm. In fact, I make up my mind. 
to give up. I see. But then the subsequent question is, if I give up, what am I going to do next? Yep. So I couldn't answer that question. If I stop now, if I quit the business, so what am I going to do next? Quit is easy, but how after quit you still yep. you still have life to go on. Yep. So then I couldn't answer that question. Shallow, how ah? I said no choice, lor. Continue, continue. So that 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 is just just simple like that. Then I. I talked to the team. I said, uh, "See, everyone know that what is the problem with the company." So, of course, uh, the management team have decided we have to come up some strategy. Since two of our gallery is burned down, then we decided to launch mobile gallery. Wow, we are rebuilding back our gallery, yeah. and uh, of course, uh, we also initiated some. Uh, we also invited uh, some people to come in to be our. Investor, so that to help us to rebuild the gallery. So mm -hmm. I think it took us about about four to five months time to put everything back on track. And well, thank goodness you stayed on because 2016 you won the war. <laughs> <That's a, laughs> so right? you and, never know, is it? Also, yeah. And also shows come to shows uh, how from a difficulty you started something. Uh, you came up with the mobile mobile gallery, gallery. right? Mm. And and as a leader of several businesses you now. What are the values you wish to instill in, in all your employees or also the culture you try to create across all your companies? Um, we have a unique culture in our company. I encourage everyone to take risks. Take okay. risks. And I always said, drop. Sorry. I always said, take every risk. Drop every fear. So in our company, we have... Mm -hmm. A program, okay. Call um, I am a backpacker program. So we want every of our employee go backpacking. Okay. We subsidize them one wow. to one ringgit matching. Okay. So you got to go, and then we said ten year, ten country, ten year, ten country, okay. regardless of your position. Got any vacancy at your company? <laughs> 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 okay. So you see, um, what we see is while you are doing backpacking. You learn a lot. You have to take risks. You yeah. got to go to a place you've never been. Yeah. All right. You got to face people. Then we, I will reject if you tell me that you are joining a tour. No. Okay. You got to go by your own backpacking. Every single employee has. Every single has employee to go are encouraged to do that. Okay. Is by volunteer. Okay. So far, I think more than half of them have participated. Okay. So then we have a lot of story to share. Whether you are a club. Or you are a director. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. One to one matching. Go backpacking, then come back. Bring back the story. Mm -hmm. So this is what we believe in business. Take risks. Explore the world. Mm -hmm. All right. Capture more imagination. Yep. So travel the route which is less traveled. All right. And very interesting. And uh, many startups, right? They're very rigorous with their hiring process. You hear a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, especially of in the beginning stages, they say, oh, we, we don't have big funding, so we cannot hire the wrong person, for instance. So when you want to employ someone, what, are the, what do you need to see in that individual before you, you decide, okay, this is the person, him or her, I want to hire? So maybe I do it, I answer you in the other way around, what we don't see. Okay. Besides, I said what we see. Yeah. First, you won't believe. We do not see their education background. Okay. I do not care, or we do not care, whether you are degree or master degree. Mm -hmm. To us, that one is least important. We do not see nationality. Mm -hmm. We do not see color. We do not. What we see, you see, I give an example. Um, in our company, our marketing team, mm -hmm. we have four graphic designer. Mm -hmm. Only one of them, out of four, only one of them have a formal uh, degree. Yep. Yeah, I mean, in this particular field. The other three, they learn by themselves. They have no certificate, degree or whatever, but they are our graphic designer and they do good work. Mm -hmm. So, see, then what, what, what we look up to, and then I always ask them the commitment, how committed you are. Mm -hmm. So what we want is, I mean, a um, high level of commitment, not high level of educational background. 
and define commitment. What? How do you, uh, how do you determine commitment. someone is committed? Yeah. So we cannot determine commitment through interview. Okay. We cannot. So, but then, uh, as long as they're willing to do something which they not usually do, mm -hmm. we will give them a try. Okay. Then, uh, throughout the trial, it will speak by itself yeah. whether you can do it or not. So everyone come in, they always got a task where that task is not they are good at. We want to give them something they are not good at. So okay. we want to see when you are facing something which is uh, abnormal to you, how you respond. Yeah. So this is, again, you see, yeah. relate back to the backpacking story. Yeah. So when you go backpacker, you're a backpacker, you got to face a lot of situations which you're not used to face. Okay, very interesting concept. Yeah. <laughs> and as an entrepreneur, more often than not, when you are beginning, you're starting out, uh, you, start off as, you start off as a nobody. Nobody knows much about you. How do you manage to gain the confidence and the trust of your employees, of your, and your team members? How, how was it like for you? Walk the talk. Okay. We do what we said and we said what we do. And um, as a leader, mm -hmm. we clearly know that my responsibility mm -hmm. is to set a direction. Mm -hmm. Everyone coming to the company with a mindset that they wanted to contribute. Everyone. But then what to contribute? A clear direction must be there. Yep. So I think this is what I do every day. And uh, moving on, when we talk about success now, how do you define success? See, uh, success, like I say, every company, almost every one of them start as a startup, started from a startup. Mm -hmm. So from a startup, they may grow or may not. Mm -hmm. So those who may grow may become an SME. Yep. All right. So that took sometimes five years or more. So time is time will ac actually prove everything, mm -hmm. whether you are success or you are not success. And along that period of time, what make people fail? is because they couldn't overcome difficulty, challenge, and so on. Mm -hmm. So, if you ask about success, I would say uh, it's actually not about waiting the storm to pass, but it's about learning how to dance when it's still raining. Mm -hmm. See, 2017, everyone said it's a bad time. Yeah. So what to do? Close down the shop, wait until the good time, reopen again? Mm -hmm. No way. So. <laughs> I mean, uh, success, to me, it means facing the challenge, overcoming, over and over again. And mm -hmm. even time, we will success. And, and your latest uh, business ventures, of course, are the CO3 mm. uh, social office. Firstly, for the benefit of the audience, you know, tell us uh, what, what is CO3 about and, and what inspired this, uh, this new venture? All right, CO3. Hey. Okay, some imagination, you see, eh? CO3 social office, we define social office, see the words of social office coming from social mm -hmm. media, social network. What difference? We wanted to turn something which are virtual social network into mm -hmm. physical. So, see, it's a space. That space has to be at least 20,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And then this 20,000 square feet, we make it Google alike, very cool. Yep. I mean, the concept have to be something, a cool office. And then we put in a few hundred people, mm -hmm. about 300 people. And these 300 people has to be from different organization. Okay. And everyone work under the same roof. I say again, 20,000 square feet, mm -hmm. Google alike, cool environment, 300 people, a working together. So we said, this is something inclusive. We need to include a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Every time when I come to here, people will say, oh, yeah, you're talking about shared office. No. Yeah. 
You see, we're not talking about shared office. We're talking about social office. What makes the difference? Three elements. CO3 coming from these three elements. The first one is connectivity. Mm -hmm. The first CO coming from connectivity. We all know that when people connected, a few hundred people connected, mm -hmm. they will start to collaborate. They work yep. together. The second CO. And then the third, when they start to work together, so they become a community. Mm -hmm. So this is a CO3. The, okay. the ideology of CO3, three CO come together to become a social office. And, and how do people take part in this, like, this social office? Man? Oh yeah, I mean, basically very simple. It's, 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 it's through membership. They okay. can sign up to be the member of CO3. Then they will gain access to this place and they will mm -hmm. use this place as their office. As simple as that. And do you think that, uh, that the landscape of employment is changing, especially amongst millennials, uh, with the rise of you know, tech startups? And, mm. and, if, and if so, how, how do you think like, more traditional organizations can learn in terms of adapting to the needs of the, of the younger generation? I think we get to see what the younger generation want or their core value. Mm -hmm. And we realize that those who were born after 1990, which is currently about 20, 25 years old, mm -hmm. plus minus, this group of people are currently the fastest growing workforce. And their core value is different. What they look, what, what they want. Mm -hmm. Freedom. Yep. A lot of freedom. So how? We wanted to create a workplace which allowed them to have a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So they gain freedom. Yep. You see, um, I agree with you. I mean, the landscape have changed due to many reasons. See, the concept of employment is just about, about 100 years ago. See, then uh, after that, it started with corporate office. From corporate office, it's become a service office, shared office. Then there are also people call it home office. And now come to what we call it social office. Mm. See, um, knowing that everyone has different needs, especially the 90s. They want freedom. Yep. So what we do, we create, we create that space for them so that they feel that that place is a place they can call home mm -hmm. and they don't want to quit. Then, um, and not to forget mobile technology, crowd computing and so mm -hmm. on. All these things is now make, make I mean, uh, working mobile remote possible. You no longer need just a fixed office to do your work. You can travel around and still get the work done. Yep. So yeah, the landscape has changed. So as the office space has to be changed and um, the environment has to be changed, mm -hmm. then uh, the best talent will come to you. Okay, and what are your thoughts on wealth creation? Wealth? Yeah. Everyone like that? <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. It's a byproduct. Okay. See, I mean, uh, a good friend of mine often remind me, he said, uh, Yong, don't worry about the money. Don't worry. First of all, the world is not lacking of money. They're lacking of good idea and good people. Okay. Number one. Number two, wealth is a byproduct. When you are doing the right thing, the right thing, Mm -hmm. Wealth will follow you just like your shadow. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not chasing around wealth, but then uh, well, we insist on you. <laughs> doing what is right. And we believe when the sunlight comes, the shadow will appear. Mm -hmm. And shadow is wealth. And uh, lastly, a couple of questions before you go. Yeah. If you can recommend one thing, uh, be it courses or seminar books or any simple advice to a young individual, just starting his or her career, uh, what would that be? Backpacking. <laughs> Go travel around world. Yeah. You can read. Yeah. You can read. But bring along the book to read. Okay. All right? Go travel around world. Backpacking. You again. If they can't afford to backpack, they should send your the resume to the young company. <laughs> Why not? Okay. And backpacking is, 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 is by far the very budget way to do it. Everyone can afford. Yep. 
Okay, and your the last question is if you could turn back time to when you're you're still relatively young, but if you could turn <laughs> back time to when you're twenty or to twenty five, what advice would you give yourself having learned having learned from the mistakes you've made? What advice, huh? Yeah. If uh, but by 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 the way it would happen, but then if uh yeah. I will say the Get married young. <laughs> okay. Get married young. That's what everyone else. People say the opposite, actually. But no, yeah. I I I want to get married young. Okay. I want to have kid while I'm young. Okay. As young as twenty five. So, see. Uh, we always what, say what what the re- what's the reason behind behind this? See, everyone always said okay when I settle down, so then I will focus on my family. When my career is stable, so then we get married to have kids and son. I think, no, you will never settle down when you are in business. Yeah. So even up to now, I don't see I'm having any chance to settle down. So might as well, anyway, I couldn't settle down. Might as well, I get married as soon as possible. Okay. So that I settle down the family first. Okay. So I see it this way. All right, and uh, Young, it's been a great conversation, jam-packed with a lot of uh, lot of wisdom from you. Uh, we wish you well for your current and future businesses. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jonathan. And uh, guys, that's all we have for today's episode. Remember, if you like the program, uh, give the video a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel, or maybe even drop us a comment. As always, I'm Jonathan Roberts from Star Property TV. Take care and see you next time.